Hey guys, welcome to our channel, the number one place for people who love design, art and everything creative. My name is Laszlo, I do illustration and graphic design and today's video is about movie poster design. Now alternative movie posters are having a little bit of a renaissance within the art scene at the moment thanks to the works of Matt Ferguson, Murray Bergeron, Matt Taylor and many many other artists' incredible work. And I thought to myself, hey, I want to be a part of this, so let's make a poster for something cool. My chosen project is The Batman by Matt Reeves that's coming out next year. Batman seems to be a hot topic in Hollywood at the moment, because yeah, that movie is coming out and we got a new logo, a new poster and a trailer for it recently. We're also gonna get Zack Snyder's Justice League cut this coming year, and apparently in the upcoming The Flash solo movie, we're gonna have Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton both reprising their Batman roles respectively in a multiverse kind of scenario. Exciting times! So without further ado, let's open up that sketchbook and design something amazing and have a nerdy little chat about Batman while we're at it, why not? Now I almost always start illustration projects on paper, I tend to go for that handmade feel, even on a digital scape. Starting this way just allows me to play around with visual ideas pretty quickly. I don't know about you, but I always thought that Batman looks his absolute best when you show him from a side view profile. So I'm going for that, you know, nice jawline, wanna show a lot of cape. Let's get her around some Gotham City landscape. I also want to put in the new Catwoman from the trailer, just as a silhouette. That's pretty much enough for the base sketch, so I'm going to move this into Photoshop so we can start painting over it. Now that we are digitalizing, we need to rearrange the composition a little bit to fit the format and I thought we should also go through the basic movie poster formula. So the standard movie poster size is 27 by 40 inches. This is also called the one sheet and in terms of structure, movie posters, at least for us westernized audiences, tend to follow a standard flow. On top you have a line of copy, this is usually either a tagline, some explanatory text or the names of the main cast, you know, just so the audience knows who and what to expect from the given movie. Then in the middle and the background of course is our play area that we can fill out with artwork. Under that you would have a title slash logo of the movie, some info about the cast and crew, logos of the distributors and the studios and maybe a date when we can expect to see the movie. Now, as a creative designer, you have some level of breathing room within these elements, so you can and should play around with them to some extent, but it is crucial that every bit of information is clear in the poster, otherwise it's just not really a poster. Your poster could and should be decorative, of course, but its main job at the end of the day is to inform, so all these different elements have to work well together as a cohesive set, everything has to be legible. Now, in terms of style, I am getting inspiration from Frank Miller's brilliantly simple silhouette based Batman work from different comic book adaptations. These are such strong visuals which work incredibly well for a very obviously unique visual character. I also want to reference old film noir posters and of course we need to also incorporate the production design and the look of the actual movie that we get to see in the trailer. We don't know much about the actual movie yet of course, but rumor has it that Batman has to do a great deal of detective work in this one, hence my black and white noir inspiration, which I'm quite excited about, because it's something new. All this deep red and black visual aesthetic is suggesting a brand new Batman tone, a new style, which let's be honest was very much needed in the DC universe. Now in terms of technique, I really wanted to play around with this idea of starting with a dark, basically almost black canvas and then painting with white. It is such an interesting and useful exercise for any artist, as it is basically the polar opposite of how we would normally draw, you know, with a graphite pencil on a white piece of paper. It really forces you to think outside of the box, which is always a useful thing to practice. Now I'm gonna speed up the process a little so you can just see the piece coming together nicely while we geek out a little and talk about superhero movies a little bit. Now personally, I feel like for the last couple years or so, DC was looking at the Marvel movies, sudden and quite unbelievable success, and obviously they wanted a slice of that pie, so they have tried to replicate a very similar direction with their movies. Now, unless you're a DC super fan, average moviegoers did get the impression that this marvelization of DC heroes is just not on brand, it doesn't feel authentic, and so it ended up with so-so results. I mean, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, for example, clearly has inspired Suicide Squad, 
very similar plot, you know, anti-heroes being forced to work together, well-known songs in the soundtrack and all that, but honestly, which movie did you prefer? In my opinion, they're not even comparable. Now, I like to think that this era is over, and from now on we get to expect some great upcoming content from DC in the years to come, for two main reasons. One being, with the success of the Joker movie with Joaquin Phoenix, they have finally realized that they should just quit trying to make Marvel movies and go back to their own thing, which is being dark and menacing. While Marvel heroes are a bit of fun, oftentimes they don't take themselves very seriously, Gotham City on the other hand should be an actually terrifying place filled with horrible crimes and tortured souls, even on the hero's side. And reason number two, the DC characters do have a very high degree of legacy. I remember when I was a kid growing up in the 90s, there were no other superhero movies, it was only Batman. Of course we can argue about the quality of some of those movies, but I think most of them are actually quite stylish, the production design is great and they do hold up well, especially the Tim Burton ones. And if these multiverse theories about the Flash movie are true and Michael Keaton does come back as Batman, that means DC finally found something that the Marvel guys don't have. They have the ability to trigger nostalgia, and that's a very powerful force. But Marvel can also play around with multiverses and different versions of their characters. And as a side note, let's mention that they are planning to, as in this post-endgame era, they probably have realized themselves that they are close to the limitations of this Marvel Cinematic Universe. The problem is they don't have the past portfolio to back up this direction. For example, Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. There are no other Iron Men, at least not that we have seen in previous movies. But Batman and its whole story can be approached in different ways. Just like a James Bond movie, the audience expect Batman movies to stand on their own feet. And they need to deliver a complete package with every new project. You need a new Batman, you need a new Batmobile, you need a new Alfred, a new Joker, and so on. Now, seeing this variety is enjoyable for both the audiences as well as the filmmakers. Actors get to have different takes and add their own unique mark to the well-known characters, twist them any way they like. And we, the fans, we get to compare and see what we like. Robert Pattinson is such an interesting choice to play Bruce Wayne as well. He's not the kind of actor who, who they could use for a Marvel movie. I don't think he would go through the usual Marvel treatment. I don't think he would be working out and live on brown rice and chicken breast for a year just so we get to see a well-defined six-pack for three seconds in a movie. He's an unconventional choice which suggests an unconventional movie. And that's something that DC can take advantage of. I also love this new bat suit, you know, it's, I, lo I love this vampire-like color, I love drawing stuff like this, so I actually exaggerated it a little bit. I also love the fact that this costume feels very handmade. We have seen very rubbery, latex Batman equipment in the 90s, then Christopher Nolan gave us a very heavily militarized Batman with the Dark Knight trilogy. I mean, he literally drove around a tank. And now we're getting something that's a bit more retro. Okay, I'm bringing in some royalty-free background images here. Some buildings, some windows, partly for reference to paint over, but I think I actually will leave some of these visible to some extent, to create a mixed media piece. I think it's quite fun to collage things in this way, so the viewer can't really tell if the poster was drawn or photo manipulated. That just adds more complexity to the piece. Batman I want to feel handmade though. Here's my main focal point, so I need to spend more time painting and rendering here. I want Batman to draw people's eyes in, so he needs to be visually the most interesting part of the picture. If you have seen some of my previous art videos, you know that I, I really like vectorizing elements with Adobe Illustrator, so I do jump a lot between Photoshop and AI. I like to lay over vector as parts of the image on top as well, so the final image looks part vector, part pixel based. I do this especially for the background, as movie posters tend to have more abstract, undefined backgrounds, while the focus is usually on faces and characters. On the overall composition, I want to show some wear and tear as well. I want this to feel like an old poster, basically. So I'm laying over some heavy texture layers. And of course, I'm simultaneously constructing my actual poster format, you know, bringing the logos in, writing up the credit section and all that. I have also designed a new Batman logo. As one does, that's just something I always wanted to do. Sue me. Don't sue me. Just to have it here projected onto the sky as the bat signal. 
Not like anything's wrong with the new actual Batman logo. I have to admit, when I first saw this type-based solution, I did not get it, you know? I thought it's not as clever or elegant as some of the older designs. But as soon as I brought it into my actual Photoshop file, I was like, oh, you know what? Okay, I get it. I see what you guys did there. This thing looks good on anything. I mean, you might as well fill the background with black and you got yourself a working poster. The logo is just that good. Okay, we are getting there. As the last steps, I have played around with some adjustment layers just to tighten things up and I brought in the main actor's names on top as well. Now, pretty much as soon as I finish this little bad project of mine, Warner Brothers has released this poster, which is not entirely dissimilar to what we have just done, but you know, oh well. That kind of stuff does happen. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little informal bad chat. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of the poster. Hit like and subscribe and join our little design tribe if you are into art, design, architecture, branding, interior design. Because we make videos all about that kind of stuff and everything in between. Take care guys and I'll see you this time next week. Bye.